It's that time, everybody. It is that time. That's right. It's time for another edition of Maryland's Cafe Society Radio right here on the YouTube channel. It's the second edition for summer. You know, I try to bring you at least two to three shows during the summer season. And so this is show number two for our summer. Of course, today is Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. And how has your summer been? Listen, I guess you could say summer is officially over now, right? Vacations are over. Staycations are over. The children are back to school. My goodness, where has the time gone? It's over. (laughs) Well, listen, I just wanted to pop in today because I met this beautiful person that I just had to introduce the audience to and give her some 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 spotlight time on the show. She's doing some wonderful things. And um, let's go ahead and and get the talk started. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Miss Sandra Bivens to the show. Hey, Sandra. How are you, Marilyn? Thank you for having me on today. Oh, I am well. I am well. I'm still just uh, sort of disbelief on how fast the summer has gotten away from us. Yes, it's over already. It just mm-hmm. seemed like it started. And before I know it, I'm going into wintertime. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Sandra is executive director of the 51st Street Business Association. But let me just tell you a little bit more about her. She has earned a master's of science degree in community economic development from the New Hampshire College School of Business Administration. And of course, her bachelor's degree in communications from Roosevelt University. She put her education and training to work by providing training and consulting services to community organizations, resident groups, cooperative boards, and government agencies. Now, Sandra is presently, as I just said, executive director of the 51st Street Business Association in Chicago, Illinois, Mm -hmm. and has been so for the last 12 years where she works with multicultural ethnic businesses and owners. So again, Sandra, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, with all of that going on with you, um, and, you know, today being Inner Nerd Day, <laughs> find your inner nerd. <laughs> Sandra, considering the current definition of nerd, we're not going to talk about what the past definition of nerd was because it had a negative connotation. You yes, know? it did. Yes. We're socially awkward, clumsy, unattractive, all of that if you were called a nerd. Yeah, yeah. But of course, now nerd means the studious person, the intellectual person, the person who's technically inclined, who seeks information. So do you consider yourself a nerd? (laughs) Well, I guess with that definition, I would be because I like to be informed. I like to uh, uh, find out resources and what's going on in the world and in the neighborhood and in the community. So if that makes me a nerd, I think I'm kind of (laughs) nerdy. Did some community, well, you do community activism, activism, yeah. I should say. You're an organizer, a business developer, and you've been doing this for the past 25 years in the great yeah. city of Chicago. So, and, and then, of course, with your accomplishments in academia, my goodness, I, I would say, yes, you are a nerd. Yeah, I, I'm I, a nerd. You, I've been a, a closet nerd for. that's a good one i like that closet nerd (laughs) well listen i'm a fellow laker so i think we should pause for a minute just to uh to send some prayers up to the family friends and of course all who theodore gross who was the uh president emeritus at roosevelt university you know he passed yeah 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 so um i believe he was there when i went through roosevelt so um, he signed my my degree. Did he? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So listen, um, it's also Black Business Month. Yes. And uh, Sandra, you've uh, found a wonderful way to support businesses as as well as work to uh, change a distressed community and turn it into a viable neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the 51st Street Association and, 
And of course, uh, what inspired you to start it? Well, you know, to me, every month is Black Business Month. <laughs> That's how I look at it, you know, because we are trying, the 51st Street Business Association specifically uh, began with, believe it or not, Richard Steele's wife, Jera, you know, she had a secondhand store here on 51st Street uh, 10 years ago. And folks was breaking into her stores and breaking into other businesses mm -hmm. all down 51st Street, you know, and, and it was it was just, we just had to do something about it. So I came over here as a consultant firm uh, to do some, because I had a contract with the Chicago Housing Authority to, to uh, perform their uh, uh, citywide elections, you know, and there was 50,000 public housing residents before they tore everything else down, you know. But anyway, it's because of the break-ins, we talked to the alderman, we met with the alderman, alderman Pat Dow, and Pat said, you all need to get together form some kind of entity so you can show some power so that when you when you go to the police uh, commander or, or anybody to assist you with the issues over here, that you have some support behind you. And that's just what we did. And that's how the that's how the 51st Street Business Association was formed and became the entity that we utilized in order to make change in the community. And because of my background in organizing and business development, for some reason, I can't even tell you how, I ended up running the 51st Street Business Association, you know. But I guess also because a lot of the businesses didn't know how to organize, you know. So which means somebody that had some knowledge, and Pat knew that I had knowledge because even before she became alderman, we had worked together on projects, you know, uh, when she was with the uh, city and when she was executive director over here for another organization. And um, we began to pull people together. And so because we had businesses of all ethnic groups. We got Asians, we got whites, we got black, you know, and many of these businesses have been here over a hundred years or more. And so whether they're black or not, they're not going anywhere. So which means my biggest uh, challenge was to bring them together to begin them talking together, working together so we can build something viable for this area, for the community as well as for the residents, you know? And so that's how we began forming that's how we began the 51st Street Business Association and uh, uh, starting to make change in this community because we had a lot of crime and drive-by shootings. Girl, I had to go out there and talk to the brothers. I used to tell them, I say, why are you all hanging around in groups when you know somebody's going to come by and shoot at you? You need to get off these streets, you know? So, I mean, we had to do a lot of work with the community as well as the businesses to begin to have people change their mindsets and understand that this can be a better community, it can be a better neighborhood if we all work together. Yeah, so, so east to west, how far, how far is your reach? Uh, well, basically we start at 51st and King Drive and we go all the way down to 51st and the Dan Ryan where the uh, commander station is. Okay, got it, got it, yeah. So, so yeah, you guys did lose a lot of, of people when the, when the projects were, for, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that was a, a, a transition that the businesses had to begin to understand that they were going to have to change. And that was one of the things I would often talk with them about is that you don't have those customers that you used to have. So which means now you have to begin to look at how you're going to generate new customers, new income, because new people are coming in this neighborhood now. And they're not going to come to the neighborhood uh, a grocery store if your product isn't up to par. I, can, I can't hear you too clearly, Marilyn. Uh, that, that area has undergone a lot of gentrification. Yes. Um, I, I lived there from the mid '90s to the mid 2000s, and and I witnessed a lot of that that uh, change that you're you're talking about how the community changed. Yeah, and it was a, it it over the last ten years, we have really made some changes. If you come to 51st Street now, don't it doesn't look anything like 51st Street did uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, ten years ago. I mean, because one thing I began to do, the city has different monies that you can utilize, such as the uh, small business increment financing funds that you can get a grant as a business to redo your facade, you know, okay. to, to make your building look better, you know. And, and okay. so I started getting some of the businesses to go after that kind of money. So and so we got a, a lot of our vacant units off the uh, 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 back on the tax roll. 
the office I'm in today was one of the ones that was redeveloped with the uh, spiff money, you know. So we had to, I had to find ways and we as a group, as a board had to find ways to bring in income to help the businesses look better, grow. I, I, we, I, I would give them ideas of how they can make their stores better or their business better, teach them about marketing, things like that so that they can be better, but also that they had to be a community business. And so, which means that the residents know you, like you, and don't, and don't mind coming to a uh, service, you know, uh, um, utilize your services. Yeah, yeah, I think that is fantastic that you stood up and took on that, that role as a leader make that happen for for the businesses because you know um the, the beautiful unique thing about uh, a city like chicago you know a lot of suburban towns uh depend on their downtown or the malls but um bigger cities have those communities uh within the city that yeah. you know people have to have uh you know can walk to to get the services that they need. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and what's important, yeah, and what's important is that we have a seven block area. We weren't going to get the big dollars that some other communities would get. So that means we had to figure out how we was going to make change ourselves and utilizing the few dollars we could get from the city or the state or whoever and, and make this change in this neighborhood. And this is just what we did, you know, because like you said. 10 years, you know, years ago, you knew what you knew how it looked. You know what I'm saying? But uh, now, girl, we got at least three new developments coming in on 51st Street. We got the Policy Kings, which is a uh, uh, partner, which is one of the partners is Corey Gilkey, who owns uh, uh, Leaders, and that's like a, a sports company. And he's going to do uh, uh, restaurants and, and right down 51st, where the old uh, um, Kane Barber College was. All that's going to be restaurants, and he bought all the storefronts there too. And he's going to have some uh, 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 stores in there as well. Then we got uh, Carrie Young, KLY Developers. They bought the old Swagger Building on Fifty First and Prairie, and they're doing forty nine units there. You know, and these are black developers. Okay. And then I have one more black developer that's just bought the mall that the Alderman's office is in, and that and we got three new black developers on this strip doing and helping us turn 51st Street around. Very nice. It sounds amazing. I can't wait to get back down in that area. It's been a couple of years, you know, with COVID going on. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> well, you know what? When you come, you could come when you come to our festival. <laughs> well, that's where I was headed next, you know. Okay. Um, now, I, I've heard that, that you also worked in your illustrious career as a song stylist, of mm -hmm. course, throughout the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. and you performed in clubs and concerts and plays and street festivals. Um, tell me, what is a song stylist? Well, you know, I got that title from Nancy Wilson. I oh, used to, she used to always call herself a song stylist because it just means that you take a song and, and you, you know, kind of uh, uh, style it to your. In, to, to the way you feel, to the way you see the world. It depends on the words, you know, so you become the stylist of a song, you know, and I just thought when she said that that was so true. So that's where I got that from. <laughs> Nancy, you know, she was, she was something else. I love it. I love it. And she was truly a gem in the jazz world. Depending on the way you you have created this way to, to bring jazz entertainment back into the Bronzeville community because Anybody who knows anything about Chicago, you know that used to be the entertainment capital of this country. Yes, yes. Specifically for jazz and blues. And the Bronzeville community, I mean, you know, that King Cole and and, and all of the greats. Uh, um, oh, gee, Quincy Oh, yeah, Cole, they all. Quincy Jones. I mean, the list is long. Sam Cook, all of them yeah. came from the Bronzeville community. And so you founded the Brown Derby Jazz Review as mm -hmm. well as the Bronzeville Jazz Music Festival that you just said, um, um, that event is coming up this coming Saturday, August 27th. Yes. You're celebrating 10 years of this yes. Bronzeville Jazz Music yes. Festival. So what can, uh, first, first of all, uh, beyond bringing it back into 
for the Bronzeville community, what's what's the purpose of this? Uh, well, you know, the first yeah. thing is that as we began to change the community, we also had to change the image. You know, we have to remind people to have, especially the local residents, to have pride in your communities. We have pride in our Black history. We are the Black metropolis, as Harold Lucas would say. Lord rest them. And, and, and we have to have pride in who we are as a people. So, which is why we began saying, okay, this community has a history of the greatest jazz in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So why not, why not do something with the music history of Bronzeville to begin to bring people back, you know, to the uh, community? Because Bronzeville was the, was uh, uh, the soul of our good friend Harold Lucas, who passed recently, and things in Chicago were so bad that it was bad enough to make a Negro, and as he would say, turn black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so he wanted to bring the music back, and so he was one of the founders of the Brown Derby Jazz View. Him and Paula Robinson, you know, Paula Robinson does the, uh, has been getting the designation for Bronzeville to be the Black Metropolis area. And between the three of us, we said, okay, this is a great idea to bring the music, bring the history of Bronzeville back. Also put great artists that live in this community back to work and also to bring pride back to the residents in the community by understanding their history. And so we ended up uh, working with the Great Lakes Elks Lodge. If you remember, that's been here for about a hundred years and it's black owned now for about 60 years. And they, and they, uh, uh, Ms. Jackson at the time, let us utilize this space for free. And we and we brought in Maggie Brown. We brought in uh, uh, Cinnabella, the Brownsville Diva. We brought in Annette Frank, Junie Vaughn. Oh, girl, we brought in so many of the local talent. And they came in initially doing it for free. Not We didn't charge us anything just to help us get this project of pride and history yeah. off the ground. And from that it grew into the Bronzeville. We decided, okay, we've, we're, we've been doing this for about eight years now. So, well, we was doing it maybe about, let's say two years now. And we said, now we could take it larger. You know, now we could take it to the next level. So that's when we started with the, uh, it, first it was the 51st Street Jazz and Music Festival. And our theme has always been stop, start the music, stop the violence, because we wanted to get the brothers understanding that, hey, listen to the music. You don't need to kill each other. You know, we got to stop this violence against each other. And then over the years, it grew into the Bronzeville Jazz and Music Festival. And it has been evolving and evolving. And this is, like I said, this is our 10th year. And uh, Alderman Pat Dow has been so supportive of our project, you know, uh, Representative Lamont Robinson, even before he became a representative, because he has his all-state office right over here around the corner. Mm -hmm. So he's been working with us as well, as well as our sister girl, Senator Maddie Hunter, you know. So we got good political, social, and community support. And I, and you know what? The first one we gave after the, after the festival, we were walking down the street and, and residents were stopping us in the street saying they never seen anything like this. They had a wonderful time because we do this in the hood, on a block, not in a park, not in a parking lot, but right here in the neighborhood where they can just walk in their own neighborhood and see some of the best talents like Robert Irving Jr. We even had the Philharmonic uh, Fellows out here from, from the Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, uh, you know, uh, organization. I mean, doing some great things, girl. That's all I could say. And, and we got young groups, too. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a wonderful way to introduce the young kids in the neighborhood to jazz, you know. Yes. And, you know, kind of expand their, their mind and their horizon. Yeah, well, you know, we have young people like Jeremiah and Isaiah Collier. And Isaiah yeah. Collier and Jeremiah started with us when they were young kids. And then and the, uh, Isaiah, I think last year, was up for a Grammy. But he still came out and played in our little neighborhood. You know, him and his wonderful brother, who is just, and Jeremiah's playing all over the city of Chicago, you know, the big clubs and everything. So as they grew up, they didn't forget about us. And so we do have the youth. And we support them. And so you, you have your youth and elders working together. You know what I'm saying? It's wonderful. It's amazing. It's amazing. So tell us what to expect on Saturday the 27th. Well, on Saturday 27th, 
one thing we always do too, we have, we open up at 10 o'clock with our kids corner and that's from 10 to three. We'll have a petting zoo mag 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 magician. We'll be also giving away free backpacks and, and school supplies. We had lots of games and things for the kids, you know, so that goes on until three o'clock. Now, our actual performances start at 12, and we open up with people like Junie Bond, uh, uh, Theophilus Reed, uh, Roger Weaver, Rudy Jackson, just a, just a gambit of musicians and uh, vocalists that will be uh, that will perform, from, and we call them the Brown Derby Jazz Review uh, Band, because, oh. many, because that's how many of them started as part of the Brown Derby Jazz Review. And so they play from like 2 to 12. And then we're coming back with uh, uh, Jeremiah Collier, Bernard Crump. And then, girl, we have uh, uh, um, uh, Darlene Galloway. Dar Darlene Galloway, yeah. I think the Diane Galloway, I'm sorry. And the K uh, KCR, let me say this right. And the KCR Jazz Band, Jazz Ensemble. It's an all-woman's jazz band. So they'll be playing. And then we end up with uh, Maggie Brown, Nanette Frank, and we end the show with uh, Thaddeus Toots. So it's a wonderful day, and you're going to have a ball. So you got to come out, girl. Yeah, I didn't hear uh, the song stylist's name on the roster. I'm sorry, say that again. I didn't hear the song stylist's name on the roster. <laughs> well, yeah, well, Cinnabella and I, because Cinnabella, my, Cinnabella, myself, and Dana Devine, we're going to be the hostesses, so we're going to stick in a song or two throughout the day. Dana has been a guest on the show. Uh, oh, boy. I was on the radio when she came on with her. We talked about her, her gospel slide song. and She does that, it every year at the festival. There was something else she was doing. Um, but, yeah, she's been um, on my show. It's it's going back a while. but Well, yes, she's been supporting her. She's still doing her thing. She's still doing her thing, girl. Her and she has been supporting us us practically since we started. Same that's way with right. Cinderella the Bronzeville Diva. Yeah, you know? that's my girl too. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So uh uh and Nanette Frank, she's been with us since the beginning. Maggie has been with us since the beginning, you know. Uh it's just, you know, we have good people who believe in what we're doing to 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 revive and, and revitalize our community and they don't mind giving their time and their talent to make this happen because we know we can make it happen but we have to do it not somebody outside our community but those of us inside this community is what's going to make the change absolutely and, and then also just continue with the support of the jazz genre i mean you know yes we got to support the jazz music and keep it going my father Absolutely. introduced me to jazz as a child. And, you know, as I grew older, of course, my music <laughs> and the R&B kind of kept, uh, you know, took over my music preferences, but I still always had a heart for jazz and still do. Yeah, well, remember, jazz is the base, you know, of many, a lot of the R&B music that we hear today, you know, and so a lot of them, you look, listen to some of them chords come going on in that R&B, it'll remind you of what's happening in the jazz uh, 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 area. But one thing I do want to say, we're also, being this 10th uh, year, we're also going to be honoring and and uh, 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 celebrating Harold Lucas uh, life, because Harold was the mainspring of everything and most things over the last 25 or more 30 years that was going on in Bronzeville, you know, and um, he was, he, he really helped make change in this community and we have to continue to remember who he is. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if I met him. I, I know that I, I worked with, um, with Timuel Black when I was there. He, yeah. he had the Grand Boulevard organization going on or something um and i think mr lucas may have been in one of those meetings before. he might have because yeah. uh yeah. he helped he, he uh uh had the uh, brownsville visitor center because okay. uh, we have always also figured that if we're going to make change we have to be part of the tourist industry that's coming to chicago and why shouldn't they come to the south side you know and that's what we and that's what harold would push and that's what we would push because I, I'll never forget, I I had a um, I had a, a meeting one time one time with D Case downtown Department of Cultural Affairs and uh, um, and special events, 
And I asked him, I said, now, how are you going to do jazz in Chicago and have no representation from the Bronzeville Southside area with all these jazz artists living south? And so uh, our wonderful sister, uh, she's deputy commissioner now, uh, Jennifer uh, Washington, at the time, she was, uh, uh, she was uh, I can't remember her title at the time, but uh, she said, you know, saying, you know, let, let's do this. And they gave us a tent downtown, right at the, right downtown in Grand Park, where they host the jazz festival. And we were able to get our artists to distribute, uh, to uh, exhibit their tapes. And, and some, of our, some people were writers, you know, whatever, sculptures, painters, whatever they wanted to sell down there. We were able to do that with them. And, and Harold Lucas was behind that, him, Paula, and myself. And um it was it was a it was a a win for our for our community to even be able to be part of that uh, big jazz festival downtown. And now D Case has given them uh different funding for us to keep the music alive throughout the city, specifically on the south side, uh, uh so that we have jazz at the same time they're doing jazz downtown. They're funding people to do jazz in the neighborhoods during those same weeks. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Now that's amazing. Isn't isn't that awesome? That's amazing. Well, listen, it sounds like this coming Saturday is going to be a wonderful, wonderful experience. It is, girl. Uh, not just for the folks there in the community, but if you just appreciate jazz and you want to support the efforts of of what Sandra Bivens and and her collective group are doing together to to keep that community intact and thriving and and prospering as well as showcasing the local talent there yes sure to get on out there to 51st and king drive right yep it's 51st yeah. king drive right by the uh, george washington uh, monument and it's free okay. And, and you can bring your chair and your cooler you know we don't sell alcohol but i mean you know you can bring you know you, whatever you feel like bringing Bring your water bottle. Yeah. Bring your water bottle. That's right. <laughs> Share a water bottle. But we will have chairs and tents out there too. Uh, like we keep, we make sure we have that for our seniors, you know, so they can come and uh, sit down, you know, and um, and then those are that there's some we have grass, so those sit on the grass with their picnic baskets and their coolers, you know, and just lay back, cool out, and listen to the music. Fantastic. Well, listen, I am so thrilled to have been able to meet you and spend some time with you, Sandra Business. Same here. You are a dynamo, and I really do appreciate what you're doing, and I'm so excited and thrilled to be keeping my Chicago connection, although I left the, the city. I, I still try to stay connected. That's right. You're always in Chicago, no matter where. That's it. That's <laughs> it. And so thank you so much. Thank you. you. Any, any closing remarks before we go? I just hope that uh, I've always wanted 51st Street to be like a model, you know, almost a test. I guess you, if you was a chef, you would say it was a test kitchen of what you can do within an area if you just stay focused on that area and look at all the resources that you can utilize to come into that area. And people need to realize that change comes from within, not from without. I mean, so you just have to, if you want your community to change, if you want your community to be better, dedicate yourself to that. Even if you only give an hour a month, if everybody gave an hour a month to their community, do you realize what some of these neighborhoods would look like? You know, because we got so much skills and talent. We go to work every day. We get paid hundreds of thousands or whatever dollars to work for somebody else with our skills, but we never bring them back home. And I think that's what I learned is to bring my skills back home. And I've been using the skills that God has given me to try to make change and make people's lives better. Mm, that, that is a word, Sandra. That is a word, you know, that people can take and run with. And like you say, be effective in their community. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, my dear. Well, listen, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on this second summer special show that, that we do here at the Cafe Society. And feel free to pop by anytime. Keep me in the loop with what's happening with you all. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for having me. And I hope I see you Saturday. You know, if, if just come on out and, 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 and we'll give you a shout out. And I love your name, Marilyn's Cafe Society. I think that's so cool. It reminds me of the old days, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was part of the inspiration for for the name of it. Yeah, getting yeah. together, enjoying good music, having good yes. 
Yeah, yeah so you got to come out, definitely. You got to come out. Okay, well, my work And tell everybody gonna, to come. I'm going to try. My work schedule okay. is a little funny, but I'm, I'm certainly going to make a, a, a serious effort. Thank you so much, girl. And I'll be looking for you when I when I do. Okay. Absolutely. You won't be able to miss me. I'll be on the stage <laughs> to the one right. announcing people. <laughs> Maybe I can encourage you to uh, give us a little tune or something. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll give you a shout out. All right. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest thank of you. the day and what's left of this summer. And we'll be talking again soon. Yes. You too, dear. Take uh, care. All right. All right, everybody, that is, of course, my guest for the second edition of the summer show on Maryland's Cafe Society, uh, Sandra Vivens, Executive Director of the 51st Street Business Association. And, of course, just having some good talk with her as she uh, shares with us all that she's been doing in that community and, of course, um, letting us all know about this 10th year of the Bronzeville Jazz Music Festival that's gonna be happening this Saturday, August 27th, starting at 10 a.m. right there at 51st and King Drive. So be sure to go on out and support. All right, everybody. So um, that is it. That is it. And so what we're going to do now is just wrap up the show with the very last word, um, or I should say, um, just reviewing the word for this last uh, summer session in the month of August. Remember, it's isochronous. Isochronous is the word, and it means occurring at the same time. I blogged about it last week on the blog, and uh, you can go check it out when you get an opportunity to. And so this will be the last show until we start our new season of shows, which will be right after Labor Day in September, everybody, of this year. So I'm excited. We're going to get back on the grind, um, cranking out those shows on a weekly basis and uh, getting those blogs back going on a weekly basis. And of course, if you haven't joined the email club, be sure to sign up by sending your email to Maryland's Cafe Society at yahoo.com and just set, you know, in the subject, just say, sign me up and we'll get you going on the email club as well. Um, it's just once a week on Mondays, we send out something special to you, all right? All right, so that's it. Before we go, we gotta tell you what love is and love is on this day staying connected all right and remember if you don't do anything else this week and until we meet again be sure that you live you laugh and you love and as always it's a pleasure and a privilege and i'll see you for the new season of maryland's cafe society right here on youtube peace everybody <music>